again, and welcome to Legendary Vegan Art. Today I'm going to continue the portrait of Jared from Hot Pepper Gaming that I started the other day. And I'm going to start working on the skin tones. Now to start, I'm going to take my uh, squeeze bottle here and start waking up these paints. And I'm going to put some captions over my palette again so you can see what colors I have. Um, I use mostly Core brand watercolors. Um, I've liked them a lot, but you don't need to use these. You can use whatever is available, but it is always a good idea to use artist quality paints uh, rather than student quality. Um, so I'm going to mix up a area, or mix up a color that can cover most of the face um, with a sort of basic uh, light tan pinkish skin tone. Um, however, there are going to be lots of areas on the face that are very red and flushed because he's just eaten a pepper and is, you know, crying out in agony. So I'm going to have a red color that I'm going to lay out over that while the skin color, the light tan color, is still wet. And that'll help the edges sort of diffuse and flow out nicely um, and not look too hard-edged like can happen uh, in watercolor painting easily. I'm going to wipe off some, but not all, of the old uh, colors that I've uh, had down in this uh, skin color uh, area. I have this area pretty much dedicated to just making and remaking um, skin tones, because I mix them so often and in similar ways. And I find it's helpful to build on my old ones rather than to wipe the slate clean and start again. Some red and to counteract how orange this is going to turn out I like to get just a little bit of blue to knock it down so let's get some of this Danthrone blue see how that turns out not too much or else it'll turn kind of green and sickly looking another trick I've learned is necessary other than testing this a lot is to use a lot of water because you really don't need a strong color for skin tones. Or this yellow ochre, I like that a lot. Or this. A lot more water. See how I've wiped out, wiped away the old area, but I'm creating a new sort of large area of this skin tone that I'll be able to draw from in the future. It's a little too yellow. I'm gonna make a little pinker and peachier. Pull in some of this uh, cad red deep hue to do the trick. I've been a little up in the air about how I'm going to pull in the reference image. I used to be able to have it right here when I was doing the drawing, but I really have to have my palette here because seeing my colors is a little more important. It's the most important thing next to the actual picture that I'm drawing, so... This is looking kinda good. I'm going a little, a little redder and pinker. So I think I'm going to overlay the picture of Jared somehow into my video. So if you're seeing that, it's worked out. Mostly I'm just saying this so I'll remember to put it in in, in, in editing. I'm using another quill brush like I used last time. This one's a little smaller. Mm. And the handle on it's very, very thin. And just doesn't have much grip to it, so I got some, some Sugru, which is this self-curing silicone rubber. And I made a little grippy for it. Don't know how much I'm going to like it, but just something to try out. More water. My uh, reference back up. My tablet keeps falling asleep on me. I don't know why I wiped this here. That's supposed to be just my clean water. Getting an autopilot here, making making mistakes. Okay. This skin tone is pretty good. It's pretty light, too. Let me clean off my brush just so there's no rogue chunks of pigment in there. So I can really test how this looks. It is very light. But that's good. It's really a good idea to build up colors on a watercolor painting fairly slowly, so you don't blast in something 
too strong that you can't undo. I'm going to start going in here. It's a nice skin tone, and they tend to dry just a little lighter than how you put them down. And again, if I overshoot into these other areas, it's not going to be too big a deal because the hair up here is going to be dark enough to cover. And I think I can just carefully enough uh, approach these other dark areas. Yeah, this handle isn't working out for just the way I hold a brush. That was a nice try, though. Maybe not going to go onto the lips just yet. You know what? Actually, I am. I'm going to build a red color on top of the skin color for lips. I think that'll work out just fine. Hope I have enough of this. I'd hate to have to mix more. Mid-wash. I think that incredible nib I was using when I was putting down masking fluid may have actually been a little too rough on the paper. I've heard some people reviewing it, um, saying that it damages the paper if you press down too hard, and I may have done that. It looked a little worse when I was going over it, but I think it's actually dried pretty flat, so maybe I shouldn't worry about that. Gonna dry a nice, nice light um, base color to build all the other ones on top of, and make the whole rest of the job easy. Easier. I'm not gonna tell anyone that painting portraits is easy per se, but you can follow certain steps and make it less of a chore, definitely. I hope I can help people with these videos. I mean, I know I'm still learning myself, still practicing and trying new things, but if someone got benefit out of these videos, that would make my day. Got this just about everywhere. Gotta be careful of the weird spots you can miss. And still see my pencil lines through this. I don't know if you guys can. And I'm gonna start making uh, right on top of this mix, or what's left of this mix I have, a bit of a redder mixture. Put some more water to keep it flowing. Pull in some of these older colors, because might as well use them for something. And... Nice and red. This may not be full strength, and that's okay. I may build up basically what I've just done uh, a few more times. Um, and that's totally a acceptable part of the process, so... I'm going to start putting this down where there's normally a lot of red on a face. So that would be around his cheeks here, where he's getting flushed, um, around the nose and lips. Well, I can make, save the, the full red lip color for later. Um, just places where there's normally a lot of red appearance from blood vessels near the surface and other kinds of things. I'm going to sort of hash in the shape of the ear here. I'm going to more fully um, define that with redder colors later. Get some more water here. This is actually slightly redder than I want it to be. So just water it down. Smooth it out. Pull it to where it needs to go. Uh, definitely above the eyelid here. It's getting very red. There's a lot of coloration there anyway, even on normal portraits of people who aren't um, haven't just eaten habaneros. And looks like my paper is actually pretty absorbent and it's sucked up the first wash a little faster than I wanted it to, but that's okay. I'm using this red not just to get the red down, but because it's a little darker to indicate some of the value changes and plane changes um, regarding the planes of the face and where the angle changes. So there's definitely a angle change here. I'm going to soften this edge a bit. Oh, you can't see uh, uh, off screen uh, right over here I have my bucket of water where I clean my brush and this. right here I have my clean water, not for washing my brush but just for um, 
just for uh, pulling water into mixes. Okay, this is going to be a pretty good first draft on this painting. Get some more red here. Like I said, I'm just going to keep building it up this way. Get some more red up here. Some more dark. It's a reminder to darken this later. Let's see. Some red marks here, over here on his face. And down here on the chin. These are going to be pretty subtle, pretty well blended in. Let's soften some of these edges while the paint's still wet and still workable. Always be going back and forth, checking your reference. It's easy to get tunnel vision and think your painting should look away and just keep look one way and just keep looking at your painting and keep working on it and working on it and realizing you've kind of gone off of off of your reference. And sometimes that's okay, but for portraits like this you really want to strive for accuracy. Or this red. And I'm going to be pulling a lot of dark colors under this chin here to define that, uh, defan define that line. It's a bit of a YouTube tongue twister. Um, and, and I think when this dries, I'm going to give this a chance to set, and I think for the next video, oh man, I still need to work on these edges, uh, I think for the next video I'm going to actually work on the shirt and start pulling in some of the um, creases of the shirt that I did not manage to get in when I initially laid down that gray color. too hard-edged. Just pat this a little bit with my thing here. I got some more red. I'll have to retouch this later with more skin tones and more reds, but that's fine. Okay. It's interesting. You're going to learn how some pigments, when you pick up watercolor, definitely want to dry with a hard edge, and others don't. And the wetness of your paper and all, all kinds of other painting conditions can affect this. And I'm still piecing all this information together, so bear with me. So yeah, I've, I've put together a pretty light um, first layer with some, some peach colors and some red colors. And I'm going to be building on this uh, pretty soon. But for now, I'm going to let the, this first bit dry. Uh, I don't want to overwork it today, or right now. And... I will get back to the next video soon, where I'll be working on that shirt. Let's this coloring a little. Just realized that was lacking. All right, that's not going to dry the exact right color, but it's just going to remind me that something needs to be done there. I'm not too worried about it. So okay, that's a good uh, good first step on the skin tone. Thanks for watching, and uh, stop by next time.